It's V-Day. Valentine's Day. And this year for Valentine's Day, I am making a cake that is on theme. I always have a hard time coming up with Valentine's Day themed cakes. Because there's only so many things that really scream Valentine's Day. A card, but you can't fit cake in a card. A box of chocolates is already a dessert. I am left with flowers. Edible flowers are very common in cake decorating. It's usually one of the first things that you learn to make. They've been around forever. I've got to be the only experienced cake decorator who has never made an edible flower. And I've been making cakes for like 10 years. Well, that changes today. My name is Natalie Sidesurf of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I make cakes that don't look like cakes. And today I'm going to show you how I made an edible flower arrangement cake. I'm at my local craft store to buy some fake flowers. Cats out of the bag, I have never made an edible flower, so I really need some examples that I can reference. Look at all these flowers. Oh, look at this one. I like the look of this one. It seems somewhat simple, a good option for a beginner. All right, what other flowers look like they'd be fun to make? These mini bouquets have a few different examples of some options for flowers. I like options, especially when I have absolutely no idea how to gauge how difficult each of these flowers are gonna be to make. This aisle seems to have some filler flowers and some sticks. Oh my goodness, what are these? Look at all these faux fruits and veggies. I had no idea that these were a thing. I have made most of these as cakes, so this aisle is very relatable. Look at this garlic. Get it out of here. Okay, back to the flowers. I want to include a big leaf. These leaves are very popular, very Miami and tropical. Um, look at this one. How can I not make an edible version of this one when it literally looks like a bunch of sprinkles? I'm sold. Come on, you're coming with me. I am genuinely having a great time right now. I really love faux flower shopping. This fan looking thing is kind of cool. Maybe I'll make that. It might be a little too advanced for my first try. All right, let's go home. It's time to tackle my first flower, and I'm starting out with the simplest looking one, which is called an anthurium. I'm taking this one apart, and I read that this part is called the spadix. I'm going to call it the baby corn, and I think this part is called the spathe, but I'm gonna call it the petal. Look, it's like a heart. Valentine's Day. My instinct tells me to use this fake red petal as a mold. So I'm using wafer paper, which is an edible paper that has a very subtle taste. Anthuriums come in a few different colors, and I noticed that one of those colors is pink. And I don't get to use pink very often on cakes, so we're going pink. I've got pink, red, and white food color, and I'm diluting it with water. Then I paint it onto my wafer paper sheet. So I cover the entire thing, and the paper is stuck to the table. This is a great start. I'm pouring some water directly on the table and then I'm dipping the wafer paper into it because this is a much easier way to saturate the paper. There's a lot of texture on this petal, so there's a lot of air bubbles forming. So I'm trying to pop those and kind of work them out of the paper. No, no, this is just, I can already tell it's not looking how I want it to look. It's not even fully dry and I can already tell that it didn't really take the shape of the flower petal. All that neat texture isn't visible at all. Scratch that. I'm peeling this wafer paper off of the petal. I'm starting over. I need a new plan for my anthurium. My new approach is to make a mold of the petal using food safe molding putty. I just mix it up, I smash it into the petal, and I wait 20 minutes until it's firm. I'm peeling it away and it looks great. Finally, there is light at the end of the tunnel. So I made a mold of the top and the bottom so I can sandwich the two and they fit like a glove. I'm rolling out white gum paste. Most edible flowers that you see on cakes are made with gum paste. So I feel like that's what I should use. Emphasis on should. Gum paste is similar to fondant, only it dries much faster and harder. I have to mention, I have very little experience using gum paste, so we're all gonna learn together. Because I'm so unfamiliar with gum paste, I'm also going to make some backup petals out of my favorite edible material, modeling chocolate. These are my plan B, my option two. So I made gum paste petals and modeling chocolate petals, and I'm letting them dry overnight. Check out this mug. This is a Sidesurf Cake Studio mug. You can get one too at shop.sidesurfcakes.com. And if you're left-handed, just images on both sides and get your own. Good morning.
Let's start this day off doing something I know I can do correctly because I've done it before. Now let's make a wafer paper leaf. I'm wetting the leaf first, then I place wafer paper over top and I work it into the creases. This leaf is pretty flat. There's not a lot of texture, so I know wafer paper is a good option. Because this is such a large leaf, I'm adding a second sheet of wafer paper. That way there's two layers and it's extra sturdy. Now I just trim the edges and I set it aside to dry. The next flower to make is the rose. I have wanted to learn how to make an edible rose for a really long time. Roses are extremely common flowers to adorn a cake, so it's about time I learn. I'm cutting out two inch round circles with a giant hole punch, which is about the same size as the petals on my faux rose. I really want to pull this off, but I am a little uneasy, because I don't know if you noticed, but I've been having a bit of a rough go so far. The edges of the petals on the rose aren't perfect, so I'm cutting out a wavy line on one side of each circle. I'm stacking a few at a time because I got a lot of petals to cut. I'm mixing up a custom color of powdered food color, which in the cake biz is also called petal dust because of what I'm about to do with it, which is dust petals with color. I'm shooting for a soft peach color. Now I brush the powder onto the edges of each petal. For the center of the rose, I'm cutting a long wavy strip. Then I dust it with my peach petal dust. Wafer paper is brittle, so I'm spraying a mixture of water and alcohol onto it, and that's gonna soften it enough so that it doesn't crack. I tightly rolled the wafer paper strip, and now I'm placing it on the top of a ball of modeling chocolate. The chocolate is attached to a bamboo skewer, and that way I can assemble the rose a little easier. I'll just take the skewer out later. I'm wrapping the individual petals around the center. I just look at how the fake flower petals are placed, and I copy that. To curl the edges of each petal, I just wrap it around a sculpting tool. And I continue to add the petals one by one, working my way from the center out. Typically, the most popular edible materials that people use to make flowers is gum paste and buttercream. But gum paste has to dry overnight, and buttercream doesn't really work for a sculpted cake. So in this case, I think that wafer paper is a great option. Time to check in on my giant leaf. It's nice and dry, so I'm peeling my wafer paper away from the fake leaf. And now I can carefully trim it into the shape of a monstera leaf. And it cracked. I was not being careful. There is no time to make another leaf and let it dry, so I'm just gonna fix this one. I'll just carefully finish cutting it into the leaf shape. Very carefully. You can't be impatient with this. It looks like a clean break. No little pieces broke off, so I should be able to fix it. I brush on a little water and I press the two pieces together to seal it. Now I will be very careful with it while I paint it. I'm painting it a brighter green to spruce it up a bit. And I'm adding modeling chocolate veins to cover up any ugly parts and because leaves have veins. And back to the anthurium. I've got the gum paste petal, which is very dry, and the modeling chocolate petal, which has a little give to it. Both will work for this cake, but I'm gonna go with what I know. So the modeling chocolate petal. I was worried that the modeling chocolate wouldn't dry enough and it would look a little limp, but it's definitely firm enough and I think it looks good. As for that gum paste petal, I'll just eat it. I'm painting the edges of the petal pink and it gets lighter towards the center. It's a nice gradient from white to pink. Very Valentine's Day. To finish the anthurium, I need to replicate the thing that sticks out of the center of the flower, the baby corn. I'm rolling out a coil of modeling chocolate and I cut it in half to make two. I press the fake baby corn onto the chocolate to create texture. The last addition to the foliage is the sprinkle sticks. I have no idea what plant these are supposed to be. I've melted white chocolate and I'm dipping thin wires into it. Then I set them aside to dry. I'm pouring white tiny ball sprinkles into a bowl. Look at them bouncing around having a good time. Then I dip the sticks into a second layer of chocolate and then into the sprinkles. Then I set them aside to dry. And that's all there is to these. It's just white chocolate covered in sprinkles. These are basically snow caps on a stick. Are snow caps still a candy? When I was a small child, I used to eat snow caps with my uncle. We'd like throw them in the air and catch them in our mouth and throw them at each other. And then my aunt would come in and yell at us. He was a cool uncle. I don't have a funnel, so I'm folding a triangular shape of parchment paper into the shape of one. Then I place it on top of the sprinkle container and I pour in the sprinkles. I just wanted to show you a really easy way to get the sprinkles back into the container without making a huge mess. Pro tip, pro tip, pro tip. Pro tip. Pro tip. It's finally time to bring out cake which is a huge relief because I know I won't mess this up. I know cake. I'm stacking the cake and then I'll carve it into a rounded circle, which will be the base. After making all those flowers, I feel like I'm getting an 80s vibe from this. It's going in the direction of a tropical fantasy 80s flower arrangement. So I'm going all in 80s. This flower arrangement belongs among glass block and vertical blinds. 
This is Patrick Nagel decor. I covered this cake in black modeling chocolate to reference the black lacquered furniture that was pretty big in the 80s. And I'm adding diagonal grooves. Have you ever seen those vintage scalloped shell vases? I'm going for that look. I love gloss against matte. So I'm adding a glaze on the bottom half of the vase and leaving the top as is. And for an extra pop of 80s, I'm flicking some white food color on the very bottom area of the vase. This will give it a paint splatter effect. I just covered the top and I flick. I love this vase, I want one. I wish it was real. All right, I've got everything I need. All that's left is to assemble. Excuse me, arrange. A little melted chocolate on the back of the flowers helps to secure them to the cake. Here I've got my anthurium and I made a couple yellow roses to go with my pink rose. The large leaf goes in the back and last my sprinkle sticks. And there you have it, a flower arrangement cake for Valentine's Day with an 80s vibe. Even though I had some setbacks, I learned a lot making this cake. And I find that knowledge to be very valuable. I'm happy I stepped out of my cake comfort zone. All right, let's cut it. I'm going top down. I wondered how this was gonna cut. It looks neat, I love it. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to this channel for a new cake every week. And I'll see you next week for another cake.